So hello, everybody. Welcome to the Teaching Kitchen at New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. My name is Jeff Emily, and I am bringing you a class for Nutrition Awareness Month. Really excited. Uh, we have a special guest today joining us. Christina Conlin is a registered dietitian here in our very own food nutrition team at the hospital. So she's going to be calling in and take some of your questions related to nutrition. I know that uh, many people who come to our classes are really interested in this intersection of food and wellness and how does it all uh, come together. So very, very excited for Nutrition Awareness Month. If you didn't know that that's what it is, it's this month. And, um, and the theme for this month is personalize your plate. So we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what that means. Um, and everybody I'm should have, oh, is that Christina? I am. I'm so sorry that I'm late. That's okay. Thank you. I was just introducing you as our wonderful registered dietitian uh, at the, in the food nutrition department here at the hospital. So not to worry. And thank you so much for joining. I know how very busy you are. So I appreciate it. Um, so I was just introducing our theme, Christina, which is personalize your plate for nutrition awareness month. Um, Christina, while we're getting started here, what does it mean to personalize your plate? I mean, basically personalize your plate is just um, trying to use a variety of different seasoning flavors, maybe tapping into other kind of cultures and ethnic recipes to make your plate something that's more desirable, something that's more interested to you, but still keeping within those, um, you know, healthy fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean meat. Right. Okay, great. That's a really good explanation. That really helps me to understand that better. Um, so we also put together in your packets 20 health tips from the Food Nutrition Academy. Um, so Christina, these are some really great tips. Uh, and, and there's a lot of them. There's a full 20. So um, what are your top three to pay attention to and why? Um, let me... Let me get right back to you with that. I'm trying to open it up so I can. <laughs> sure. No, that's all right. I know you've got, you've, you've got a lot going on today. So uh, we can come back to that question. And for those of you that aren't sure what I'm referring to, this is the packet of information that you have, the PDF. And then in here, there's a list of 20 tips. So there's some really good ones. And um, I can actually jump in, Christina, with a few of, um, a few of my favorites. I mean, there's some really, really good ones here, but one of my favorites is enact uh, a family meal time. So plan to eat as a family at least a few times each week. Set a regular meal time. Turn off the TV, phones, electronic devices to encourage mealtime talk. And get kids involved in meal planning and cooking. So even if you don't have kids in the house, this is still something that I think is really important. Is just taking that time to sit down with your food, be conscious and aware of what you're eating, actually enjoy the meal that you probably worked so hard to put together, right? Um, and connect. If you know, if you don't, if you live alone and you don't have a per another person to connect with, you can always connect to yourself, connect to your senses, connect to how you feel in that moment, enjoying the food. You can, um, you know, just take a few deep breaths and really um, use it as an opportunity to cultivate some more mindful awareness in relationship to your eating. So I really like that one. And then this is one that's particularly challenging for me is reducing added sugars. So food and drinks with added sugars, of course, can contribute empty calories and little or no nutrition. Review the new and improved nutrition facts label or ingredients list to identify sources of added sugars. So if um, those of you aren't aware of this, the nutrition facts label has received a bit of a makeover. So it's actually a lot easier now to spot when sugars are being added into your food. Um, all right, so those are a few things to look at. And then um, Christina, we also have in this packet a list of tips for eating healthy on the run. If you, right. do you wanna come back to that one as well? Or you no, want to discuss no, that no. now? I'm good. Um, okay. I think eating healthy on the run kind of still incorporates with um, a lot of the tips. So 
um, like the fixing healthy snacks. If you know that you're a person that's out and about and always on the run, having um, like shelf stable snacks with you, like um, nuts, a little bits of dried fruit, um, you know, nut bars, things like that, that you can kind of keep on hand so that in between your meals, you have something to snack on so that you're not driving around super hungry and then jump to grabbing a burger or something that's quick and easy. You have some filling healthy snacks to hold you over. And even someone who you know you're on the road a lot, uh, you have kids and the kids are going to be out with you. Pack some meals ahead of time. Bring a cooler. Leave it in the car with food, snacks, drinks, it'll save you money um, and it'll help you stay on track eating the right kind of foods and kind of model for family and children on how to, you know, eat and the importance of eating the right kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. So what I'm really hearing you say is being prepared is essential. Yeah, being prepared, doing things ahead of time, it's healthier, it's more cost effective. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's more time saving in the long run. You know, meal prep takes a little time, but then on your day to day basis, you know, it, it helps save time for things. And then just those little things that some people find annoying when you go out to restaurants, leave stuff on the side, take this off, substitutions just help you build healthier meals when you're out. Hmm. That's really interesting. And I actually find now, Christina, that because I'm not really going out to restaurants much anymore. Um, if I do order in, because it already comes packaged up in containers, I'm much more likely to just take what I want out of the container and put the rest of it away. So that's something you can uh, utilize as well. Since most of us are eating at home or doing takeout or something like that, you know, just take half of it out of the container and then see how you feel after that. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much. Those are really good tips. Does anybody have um, a question for Christina? If you do, you can put it into the chat box and our moderator, um, Alita, will read it to us. Alita, how's everybody doing? So everybody is doing well. Um, what's good as a substitute if you have a nut allergy? Um, so things like... Um, fresh fruits. So any kind of fruit is always a good thing. You can keep it with you and it's just a nice little snack to hold you over in between meals. Um, you know, if you have the ability to carry around things like sandwiches, nut, um, like sun butter and other stuff like that for a quick peanut butter and jelly sandwich doesn't need to be refrigerated and kind of hang out with you. And then things like um, cheese sticks and crackers, those are easy on the go snacks that you can kind of keep and don't have to worry if they're out for a while. Yeah, and I'd also like to add to that. So Christina, you mentioned sun butter, maybe not everybody knows. Um, so sun butter is made from sunflower seeds instead of a nut. So it's just seeds, which is great if you have a nut allergy. Um, and then the other thing I've been uh, really into lately is the chickpea like the roasted chickpeas. So you can roast chickpeas and then they get nice and crispy. There's a little bit of a technique behind it, but um, basically you, you take them out of the can, you dry them very, very well um, with a dish cloth, and then you can add some seasonings to it and roast it into the oven. You guys can probably look up like a roast chickpea recipe online. There's plenty out there. Um, so that would be a good option as well as if you don't want to put the work in, they sell them already roasted. So you can just have them that way. Or um, the edamame, um, they have like the roasted edamame beans. And those are really great because they're high in protein as well. So um, one, you know, one of the things you may feel like you're missing out on on your snacks if you're having, if you're not having nuts is protein. So that could be a good option as well as the edamame um, beans that are already, yeah, you can find those sure. usually. Yeah, they're great. So you can find them usually right next to the nuts and seeds. And yeah, they're really good. And both of what you said is great. They also sell them in individual packs. So it's less tempting to eat a whole bag if you can get them <laughs> packed in like individual personal sizes. I find it a little easier to yeah. control myself. Right. Portion control. Absolutely. Thank you. Alita, any other questions before we jump into our cooking for today? 
Yes, there are. Hold on a second. So um, any suggestions okay. on low salt and low protein diets? Great question. So, so um, yeah, go ahead. Low salt would be, you know, obviously, not obviously, I shouldn't say that that's not fair. Your fresh fruits and vegetables are always going to be um, low in sodium. Anything that says no added salt um, are usually your better options. Everything, um, even your fruits and vegetables will have some amount of sodium in it, but the body needs it. It's the added salt that it becomes a problem. So anything that says no added salt low in sodium, um, even the things we were talking about, you can get the ones that, you know, unsalted um, and they still have all the same kind of snacks. The low protein would be things like your fruits and vegetables. Um, the high protein stuff would be what we said, beans, nuts, the edamame, um, even dairy can be high in protein if that's something you're trying to avoid. Great. All right. All right. There, there, yeah, go ahead. There were two additional questions. So one is, okay. one of the students recently had their gallbladder removed and was made aware of how much fat they had in their food. And they want to know, is total fat what they need to watch or trans fats or saturated fats? Um, it's more of the trans fats and saturated fats that you should be, you know, having as little as possible on a general basis, not just with the gallbladder, but the gallbladder is also something that it's not, um, it's not something that's a permanent thing to be concerned about. Eventually the body kind of compensates for not having that gallbladder and you can go back to your usual diet. Um, being a healthy diet would be not having a high fat, but it's those saturated fats, the fried fatty foods are the ones that you'll notice more of a, a problem with digestion just than regular heart healthy fats like oils and avocados. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the last question is, what are some healthy crackers or healthier? Ooh. Um, health, crackers would be more of something of looking at what are you getting out of it. So if you go for unsalted crackers, you know, they're, they're crackers. You read the labels like we were saying to make sure that you're eating the right portion size. So some crackers you might be able to get six for the same amount of fat and calories as another cracker where you only get to have two. So you want to pay attention to something like that and what's in them. Some that have added nuts and seeds will give you some, you know, little nutrient boosts as opposed to just a plain boring, not boring, <laughs> need to watch my words, mm -hmm. a plain white cracker that's just a, you know, big jump of processed flour. So whole grain, um, some added nutrient values is how I pick my type of crackers. I will add also my favorite um, crackers are the Mary's Gone crackers. Um, it's specifically the flavor that's um, like everything, everything seed or whatever it's called. It's everything something. And um, they're also gluten free because they're made with whole grain brown rice. They have lots of seeds added into it. Um, and they're not too salty. So those are pretty good. And they make a good conduit for hummus, right? Often we have hummus and crackers together. Um, and if you complement the hummus, which is a chickpea with the brown rice cracker, that makes a complete protein because we know legumes need some kind of a grain or something to complete the amino acid profile so that you can fully absorb all of the protein it has to offer. So that's kind of a fun one for, to play around with. Um, I also will like break them up and sprinkle them on top of a salad. They're really crunchy. If you like crunch, they're a good option. Alita, I'm going to begin our cooking just That's so we it. stay on track, but we're going to um, continue to take questions throughout. So today we're going to be focusing on building your own bowl. We're going to personalize your plate by sort of um, having have sort of a global array of <laughs> bowls today. So we're doing some with Asian flavors, some really wonderful um, toasted sesame oil, soy sauce, rice vinegar um, mixed together. That's going to be one bowl, one which features more Mediterranean style um, flavors. So cannellini, beans, walnuts, beets, kale. And then the third bowl features more Latin flavors. And this is going to have some black beans and avocado, um, some toasted cumin in the dressing. Um, and all of these are going to be really great complete meals. 
So I'm going to start off with the Asian salad. I have a red cabbage here and I'm just going to shred it. So I'm going to start by cutting it in half. And you have taken my classes before and know that I just like to share how beautiful red cabbages are. I think they deserve their very own spotlight. Um, and I'm just going to start by putting this on a flat surface. Now I'll cut this in half and then I'll use the edge of my knife to kind of wedge out the core so it's not so tough, all right? So we're gonna shred this, just working straight across. I, um, of course, I wash and dry everything before class. So if you haven't done that yet, if you're cooking along today, just make sure that you wash your ingredients. Tuck your fingers as you go, keeping them out of the way. And this particular salad is nice because it can be made ahead of time. If you want, it's even better the next day. So we have some purple cabbage, beautiful, bright, full of antioxidants, um, anti-inflammatory, anti rich in fiber, vitamin C, vitamin K, lots of really good things in here. So I'm going to save this little handful. I don't want to overload my bowl. All right. So I just want to have this as our base. Then we're going to add some shredded carrot, adding some more color here. We're going to add um, some cooked quinoa. Have, it's nice to have a grain in these bowls or it, quinoa botanically is actually a seed, but um, it's nice to have something that's a little bit, you know, substantial, helps to keep you full. So I have some toasted sesame seeds, pop those in for some flavor. And I have some, speaking of, edamame. So these are frozen and shelled edamame beans, and you can just defrost them and throw them right in. Again, a great source of um, protein. So Christina, do you have any thoughts on, um, on soy proteins that you'd like to share while I mince up our cilantro and our scallions? Christina, did we lose you? And I'm here, I was on mute. Okay. Um, soy okay. has a bit of a bad rap. There's a lot of information out there about it being good, about it being bad. Um, you know, anything in a large amount of quantities can always have a, a downside, but I think soy is a great alternative if you're trying to cut back on meat. Um, if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat meat, the only thing I caution with it is mm -hmm. just using it as like a, this is how I get my protein. It's not, you know, edamame is a more natural form of it, but if you're doing all the meatless kind of stuff that are based in in soy, they have a, tend to have a lot of additives, a ton of extra salt. So it's mm. that's the stuff that makes it not always worth it. That's interesting. Right. So someone might think, oh, I'm being super healthy by cutting out my meat, but I'm just eating these processed soy products, which are right. full of sodium and maybe not the healthiest of fats to make them taste good and things like that. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. That's great. That's great advice. All right. So we're going to make our dressing. Just want to show you how beautiful and colorful this is looking here. So we've got our cilantro, our scallions, our carrot, our edamame, our cooked quinoa, and our purple cabbage on the bottom. And we're going to make the dressing by popping everything into the blender. So I have a garlic clove. Actually, let me bring that blender over here so you can actually see it. Our garlic clove. We're going to add some fresh ginger. So you can use a spoon to scrape it and remove the skin. Or if you prefer, you can grab a little vegetable peeler and just peel off the skin that way. So again, beautiful fresh ginger. It's going to add tons of flavor to your dressing. Um, it's going to add a little heat too. So depending on how spicy you like your food, um, you can add more or less. All right, let's just put a little nub of ginger in there. So we've got our garlic, our ginger. We're going to use avocado oil for this dressing, about a quarter cup. And the reason I'm using avocado instead of olive oil is because I want something with more of a neutral flavor profile, something that's not so forward in its taste. So we're using the avocado oil, which is fairly neutral, um, about two teaspoons of your toasted sesame oil, 
And look at that beautiful dark color. That's that nice roasted flavor. We're going to add about a tablespoon of our soy sauce. And this is a low sodium soy sauce. So if you can find low sodium, that's preferable um, only because soy sauce tends to have a ton of salt. About a tablespoon of honey. Okay. And here is our acid, right? Every, um, every kind of dressing usually is composed of some kind of fat, salt, acid, sweet, right? So in order for it to be balanced and, and um, about a quarter cup of this is going in. Make sure when you're buying rice vinegar that the only ingredient is rice vinegar, maybe diluted with water. Um, some rice vinegars are actually sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, so read those labels. We're gonna throw in about a tablespoon of peanut butter. And for our nut-free friend out there, you can definitely just leave the peanut butter out and make this without peanut butter. That would be fine too. Still be very flavorful. And then we're just gonna give this a blend. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. So this is gonna get tossed over. You can even um, grab some of the cabbage from the bottom and kind of like throw it into the blender and smush it around a little bit to help gather up any extra dressing that's hanging out. Kind of clean the blender with your, with your produce. Okay, and this is it for our first bowl. Any questions? Um, someone had a question about what type of cracker that you, that you like from the Mary's crackers or any cracker. It's, yeah, I think it's called, um, so the brand is Mary's gone crackers mm -hmm. and they're a little pricey, which is, you know, a bit of a drag. They're like $6, five or $6 a box. So whenever they're on sale, I try to get, you know, quite a few boxes. Um, but yeah, the Mary's gone crackers, I really like with, um, the flavor is like everything, so if you're an everything bagel person, you will really like these because it has like the onion and the sesame and the poppy seeds, um, kind of everything mixed in. So yeah, and they are, I don't know if they're nut free. They have a lot of seeds in them, but they may also be nut free actually. I haven't checked. Yeah, I think they're a variety of different kinds of some. Yeah, products. there are many different kinds. There's black pepper, there's um, some with herbs, which is really nice too. So yeah a lot of different kinds to choose from. There was also a question, where, where are they sold? So I went online, they have them at Whole Foods, Amazon, oh. <laughs> Walmart, and Target. You're awesome, Alita, thank yeah. you. There's one that has the, the original virgin, version. Has the original, one. yeah, it's good too. And it's vegan. And then mm -hmm. there was a question about um, any help on the best way to eat for weight loss. Ooh, that's a good question for Christina. So. Um, one more note on the crackers. I wanted to say I buy them at Stop and Shop or ShopRite. So you can definitely get them locally here. So Christina, as we embark on our second bowl, first of all, just want everyone to look at how colorful this is, right? How beautiful, flavorful, and complete, right? There's protein in there. There's some carbohydrate, lots of fiber, veggies, um, and tons of flavor too. So Christina, as we turn to our Mediterranean bowl and I start stripping our beautiful kale off the stems, um, do you want to talk a little bit about eating for weight loss? Um, sure. So, you know, weight loss is different for every single person. All of us have different kinds of calorie needs. So weight loss is basically just eating um, a little less than your calorie needs because then your body will turn and use the body fat to um, make some energy. Um, if we're eating more than we need, that's when we see weight gain. So kind of tips for helping maybe curb some of that hunger is 
for example, kale. Kale is a great thing to have. It's extremely <laughs> filling. It's very low in calories, high in nutrients, um, but filling being that key part. So if you're eating meals and you're starting with your lower calorie vegetables, your lean proteins um, to help fill you up and then moving into more of your starchy kind of foods. Um, so filling up with those lower calorie stuff and the protein that's important for your body, it it saves you from eating a little more than you need to eat. Smaller meals throughout the day is great because then you're also working on curbing that hunger. The longer you go without eating, the more hungry you might get and the more tendency you have to just kind of grab something on the go. So eating smaller throughout the day helps keep you full, helps keep you from grabbing other stuff, and it keeps your metabolism going all day long. And on top of food for weight loss is definitely just staying active to whatever level of activity that we can get to as individuals. Some might be lower, some might be high, but just staying as active as you can get to get into that um, calorie burn. That's great. Those are really good tips. And I think I would add to that also, um, getting adequate rest is really important on so many levels, but especially for weight management, because when we don't get enough rest, we tend to, our body tends to search for quick sources of energy, quick fuel. And quick fuel is most re readily available in the form of refined sugars and refined carbohydrates, right? So that's why I know that if I've had a night of bad sleep, the next day my eating patterns are, are totally different. They really depend on how well I've slept and rested. Um, otherwise, the body is really craving these refined foods for that quick source of energy because it thinks, you know, oh my gosh, I haven't slept enough. I don't have enough energy. So I need to get it quickly from something else. Good question. And um, Christina, I also know that you are a big um, fan and um, practice practicer yourself of mindful um, mindful eating and mindful awareness. How might that tie into weight loss while I mince this garlic? Um, so for me, my mindful eating is um, kind of all the stuff that I said that's why they're my favorite kind of things is <laughs> meal prepping bringing stuff with me. Um, but the biggest thing that I stress for people who might not have spent years educating themselves on these topics yeah. is the paying attention to your, your labels and your ingredients. If you can't pronounce them, try to avoid that food. Make sure you're looking at the label. So when you see something that says um, 200 calories and you're thinking this is fantastic, that's a, a great number for me, and then you miss the serving size and realize that they're saying there's 200 calories per serving and you actually ate three of those servings. Right. So it's the food labels are what's really good to be mindful for, for things that you're not preparing for yourself. Right. Information is power. Jeff, Emily, there was a question about um, coconut aminos. Could you use that instead of, I guess, the vinegar in the previous bowl? Yeah, instead of the um, instead of the soy sauce, exactly. So if you don't, if you're avoiding soy for whatever reason, um, feel free to use a product called coconut aminos, which are basically um, like I don't really know how to describe them, but like fermented and and um, a product made from coconut like sap. So coconut is amazing because it can, you can get coconut oil, you can get coconut sugar, you can get coconut aminos, coconut nectar. There's a lot of things that come out of, out of our coconuts. So um, definitely you can use those coconut aminos instead. If you don't, you, you know, don't want to use the, um, the soy sauce, you could also use tamari as well, but tamari is soy based. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. I am just making our dressing here. Yeah. Go ahead, Alita. So there was also a question about, um, is, are those crackers, you know, those crackers are going to be very famous after this class. Are they They're going to sell out everywhere. <laughs> are they sold in the specialty section of the supermarket? Do you They're know? usually sold with the gluten-free crackers, at least in Stop and Shop. Um, so the aisle, like right next to 
right next to the produce and stuff. Usually there's a bunch of gluten-free stuff there and that's usually what it's called. And then there was a, a question about how good is tofu as a source of protein and what is the best way to cook it or is it also good uncooked? So um, I can speak to the cooking aspect. If our guest, Christina, you want to talk about tofu as a source of protein, how good is that? How often should people be having it? Um, you know, what are, what's acceptable when it comes to tofu? Um, I, I don't know if there's like a recommend, there's no recommended amount of tofu that you should eat. Tofu is a good source of protein, definitely. Um, it is, a, the protein is absorbed less than um, meat proteins, but it's still definitely something that's good to have. It doesn't have the added cholesterol. It doesn't have um, as much of the fat that you would find in a regular um, form of protein. And it's, right. very and it's also a good source of um, had, calcium, right? Yes. Yeah, it definitely has more calcium. But then it is, like I said, a, still up in the air and controversial of eating too much soy because it's believed to mimic estrogen and can cause, um, you know, some hormonal issues, although that's not something that is proven. Gotcha. So variety is important, right? So whenever we think of our meals, we often, um, we, we often hear people telling us, eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. That's really important because then you get all the different vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients. Same is true for your proteins. So you don't want to be having the same thing every day. Um, you want to mix it up. Have tofu once, have chicken, have um, tempeh, or if you are eating fish, have fish, you know you can try to mix up your proteins, eggs, so that you're not getting just one thing all the time. Um, and similarly with your fats, you want to try to use olive oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, right? So variety is key, not eating the same almonds every day, like having almonds and walnuts and, right? And not only is that really important to us on the nutritional level, but it makes food more interesting and a little less boring if you're, you know, instead of eating the same things every day. Um, and there's, I don't know about you all, but there's not a ton of variety in my life these days. So food is one of these ways in which we can travel. We can, you know, think about eating food in Italy and have an Italian meal or, you know, our Asian bowl and think about the flavors of, of you know, of, J of Japan or wherever you want to go. So variety is really important on multiple levels. Um, all right. So I'm just going to update you on my Mediterranean bowl. So as you can see, I made that dressing. It was a combination of olive oil, balsamic vinegar. I used white balsamic, but you could use regular. Either one is fine. Uh, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of honey, and some minced garlic. And I put some parsley in with my kale, and I just kind of massaged that dressing into the kale. The kale was like filling the bowl, and then I kind of pushed that dressing in it, and now it's starting to wilt. This is going to be a little bit easier now to digest, easier to enjoy. Um, otherwise, kale can be kind of tough. So we've got our kale. We're going to add some, same thing here. We're going to add some cannellini beans, right? Some protein. Let's add some walnuts, have a different nut in here. The other one had sesame seeds, right? So these are toasted walnuts. I just toasted them in the pan. Um, no oil or fat or anything needs to be added to your nuts when you're toasting it over, over a flame. Just don't walk away because otherwise they will burn quickly. I've got some dried cranberries. If you're avoiding sugar for whatever reason, uh, you can leave the dried fruit out of it. You don't have to, but I like a little sweetness, especially with kale, which is really quite bitter. It's nice to kind of build in a little bit of sweetness um, into your kale salad. This is some crumbled goat cheese, adding that in. And then I cheated today. I bought beets that were already roasted. So they have, they come in like a little plastic um, sleeve. I think it says like, I love beets on it or something like that. And, um, and they're already roasted. So you can buy them just like this and then cut them up. I'm going to take the top off here, cut them up and add them to your salads. So it's really nice way to, you know, just add more fiber, more nutrients. Beets are really nice this time of year. 
I always say beets should come with a little disclaimer though, because they, uh, they come out the same color that they went in. So don't be alarmed if you ate beets. All right, so this is our beautiful Mediterranean bowl with all the fixings. And then same thing here, you know, you can just toss it together. I'm using tongs, I find it's a little bit easier to work with, um, to work with the tongs when you're tossing a salad. So there you go. Any questions about this recipe or you guys have had fantastic questions today. Thank you so much for your participation. And um, I'm really glad Christine is here to answer them. Um, right. no, no, no additional questions, just more like, give me the exact name of the cracker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is our Mediterranean bowl. And then let's finish up with our third bowl in four minutes. I think we can do it. So you can see these are really nice. These two, you can make these ahead of time and store them for about three or four days. They'll keep. The third bowl is featuring our Latin flavors. This one is um, uses spinach as a base. So you can mix these up, right? If you wanted to use purple cabbage as the base or kale, you could definitely do that. But with the spinach, I'm just gonna note, this one should be eaten the same day because the spinach leaves are really soft and um, you know they won't stand up to the dressing in the same way that the kale and the cabbage will. So just keep that in mind that your spinach one, you wanna enjoy right away. Spinach, arugula, those softer leaves, you know, they don't really do well in us today. So we have our spinach. We've got, again, with the shredded carrot. I left the skin on. These are organic carrots. So I just washed them and left the skin on. We're going to add our toasted pepitas. And um, Christina, I forgot to ask you about the health properties of kale. Is kale really all that it's cracked up to be? Here's our quinoa. I, I, I think so. It's definitely one of those things that has a variety of your um, like nutrients. It's got vitamins. It also has minerals. Um, it's a great, great source of vitamin K, but then it's also to keep in mind for anyone who's out there on um, an anticoagulant called warfarin. It's something you should be mindful of eating because of that high source of vitamin K. Um, but yeah, it has fiber, it's filling, you can use it in so many ways. I think it's up there in my favorites with um, avocado. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So the kale craze is, uh, there's a reason for the kale craze. Um, another there's snack that's reason. easy um, to make and is also grab and go is kale chips. So if you wanted to, you could learn, you know, learn to make kale chips. That's really, really simple. And if you're a person that craves salty chips and snacks like that um kale chips are a great you know a great thing to have because you kind of get the salty crunchy factor um and you can you know at least get some of the benefits of the kale all right so same thing here we're adding our herbs so in all of these we use a lot of herbs to bump up flavor scallions cilantro parsley basil is terrific in salads if you ever just have extra basil and don't know what to do with it Add it to your salad. It's so, so good. Just tear up the leaves and toss that in. So we've got our herbs built on our spinach, our quinoa, our pepitas. These are little um, pumpkin seeds popped on the stove, just like I did the walnuts. Uh, shredded carrot, the black beans, the drained black beans. And I think that's it. Did I say everything? Cilantro scallions? Yeah, I feel like I'm just going around and around. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna add a little sprinkle of feta cheese. Of course, if, you, if you're if you avoiding dairy for whatever reason, um, feel free to leave the cheese off of it. So all of these salads are customizable based on your specific dietary needs and preferences. So I made our dressing uh, for this one very, very simple. We have some freshly squeezed lime juice, some olive oil, some minced garlic, some ground cumin. So this is our cumin seed and I just ground that up and put that in. Um, I think there's a little dab of honey in this too and a little pinch of salt. Actually, I can't remember if I put salt. So I put salt. Also, you don't need to add a ton of salt, especially if you're working with feta because the feta is really salty. So 
So as we're wrapping up here, Christina, what makes these a balanced meal? What that like, would you say that they, they are? Um, well, definitely the first one, especially, absolutely. You have, um, you know, all your components in it for it to be a heart healthy meal. Quinoa is actually fantastic because it is a complete protein other like, other than like whole grains where you need to have some other kinds of beans or nuts with it. Quinoa gives you everything that you need to be um, a, a high protein, complete protein. All of them have fiber, they have the micronutrients in it, and they give you all the components right. you need without being, you know, there's there's no added sugar, they're not high in salt. So yeah, they're they're very balanced. And I'm about to add one of your favorites, avocado. Absolutely. So tell us about that. Because avocado um, was on the naughty list for a long time. I I I don't know how. Avocado is <laughs> So delicious. Um, again, fiber, heart healthy fats, um, filling helps with hunger. I mm -hmm. it's just it's one of my favorites. It is higher in calories, but it's yeah. not it's not so high in calories. It's something you need to avoid. Maybe have a, a quarter of an avocado to a half an avocado. I wouldn't suggest eating a whole avocado on a daily basis. But I also wouldn't suggest drinking a quarter cup of olive oil either so it's kind of the same thing yeah that's a great suggest yeah that's a good analogy I like that all right everybody let's add a little squeeze of lime juice over the avocado that keeps it from browning so this is our third bowl featuring all those beautiful veggies so our time is up so um I know we started just a few moments late today, so I did want to close with a mindfulness practice. So those of you who have to run off to your next thing, feel free to do so. Um, and those of you who are able to stay for another two to, two to three minutes, um, I'm going to lead you in a mindfulness practice. So, um, so thank you to those of us who are leaving <laughs> and to everybody else. Welcome to your mindfulness practice. So I'd just like you to find a comfortable seat and plant your feet on the ground and close your eyes if it helps just to start calming the body and begin to mentally scan your body for any areas of tension. Just making a note of how your body feels. So during this mindfulness session, we're going to be focused on releasing any tension in the body and quieting the mind. So I'd like everybody to breathe in through the nose and exhale slowly, expelling any tension, just letting it melt away. Focusing on your breath. Let's try one more. And you can even sigh it out. <sighs> Just noticing how when your eyes are closed, there's this expansiveness, this infinite. Welcome this expansiveness with each passing breath. <sighs> now it's time to clear your mind. If a thought enters your mind, just let it go. Let it drift off like a cloud. There's nothing else you need to be doing at this moment. Simply to be, simply listen and relax. Nothing you need to be thinking Accept calm, relaxed thoughts. Notice how your body feels right now. Scanning your body and noticing where is today's tension stored? No, she's ending. 
Focus your attention you finished four minutes. on the part of your body that feels the most tense. Focusing your body on that spot. And now breathe deeply and let that tension go as you breathe out with a sigh. <sighs> Maybe it's in your neck or in your shoulders. Just breathing deeply and letting that tension go. Feel your attention drifting as you welcome calm. Inhale deeply, deeply into your belly, inflating your belly almost like a balloon and exhale to let it go. And when you're ready, welcome the calm and open your eyes. Okay. Great. So thank you so much, everybody, for participating in our mindfulness practice. I don't know about you, but I already feel much more calm, grounded, centered. So I hope that some of you may be feeling that as well. And bring that feeling into your next activity, into perhaps your lunch, if it's lunchtime for you. And as always, thank you for joining our classes here at the Teaching Kitchen. And thank you to our guest speaker, Christina Conlin. If we didn't get to your question, feel free to send me an email and I will relay it to Christina or answer it myself if I can. And thank you to Alita for volunteering to moderate today. So have a wonderful afternoon. Give these salad bowls a try. Um, and happy Nutrition Awareness Month. Be well, everyone. Thank you.